Holler is intended for mature audiences only, so your mom is definitely invited. Sometimes controversial, always engaging. It's the podcast that lets your voice be heard. It's the podcast that shouts you out. It's time to holler. Can you dig it? I could eat a unicorn one day through a pop tart. I like Tester Shorts. You like the jizzy part? Yeah, I like the way it explodes. You in like my it? Mouth. And to swallow it down. Oh my God. Your tweets, snaps, Facebook comments, and even phone calls. Holler any way you want. They used to give kids opiates to keep them quiet. This is much <laughs> less offensive than that. <laughs> JD, Brian, and Gracie. Holler at your boys. Damn it. Holler Nation, thank you so much for joining in today. Um, guys, I've got to ask before we get going here, did you hear the intro all right right there or no? Mm-hmm. Okay. I, for some reason, lost audio on my end, but I can still see that it played. So I was like, I'll just come in when I think it's over. I guess that's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, you know, if we if we have a problem tonight, we'll fight through it. Welcome to the world of live streaming. Shit happens. Um, as always, uh, we are so glad to have you here. Um, you guys, we're going to give away some camo CBD. We've got a very interesting guest. He's coming to us from LA. Thank God for live streaming right now, uh, or else we would not be able to have guests like this. So we are happy about that. His name is Mickey Fisher. We will get to him shortly. Um, Joined by us this evening, we've got Cole. He's in Jacksonville, Florida. We've got Gracie. She's in Huntington, West Virginia. Mickey, how is the weather in LA right now, by the way? (laughs) Man, it's It's freezing cold. It's like upper 50s. Uh, So it's like... It's like a frigid, frigid winter right now. And, uh, you know, I'm in a hoodie and uh, wearing, yeah. There's my girlfriend puts on gloves and a scarf when we go out. It's bad. How, what's it like there? Yeah, absolutely. How uh, many I've people- been wearing snow boots for the past, or since Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, we did. We got some snow already. Now, people wear snow boots here when it's like 68 because you don't get any, oh, like, no. a, you know, like, oh, you don't get any chance to wear them otherwise. <laughs> yeah, true, true. I was wondering how many people that you know out there just like, you know, have no idea what it's like to be in, in cold weather like this. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I mean, there's, I know a ton of people who grew up out here and they just like, you know, they have to go into real winter anywhere. And now I've been here since 2011 and, and like, I hope I never have to move because I love it because of the weather. Cause I can wear shorts and a t-shirt, you know, in January. Um, but I had to go to Toronto for a month in January, a couple years ago. And I, you would have thought I'd never been, you know, like you would have thought I didn't grow up in Southern Ohio where it snowed and, sleeted and all that stuff i was yeah i was miserable yeah so they, yeah they tell you they say that your blood thins out after a while and i think that's what happened <laughs> yeah that's definitely a culture shock but hey it sounds like you've made it 10 years and you're happy you're cool with it um we thank you so much for joining us and uh you know just for those that are tuning in right now um if you're in the live chat if you guys talk to us while we're doing the show we're going to throw your comments up on the screen we're going to shout you out just for doing that this is an interactive podcast we're going to have fun with you we'll get a little bit serious here in the beginning because we want to learn about our guests but the rest of the time it's all about holler nation it's all about having fun and maybe having a drink or so while we're doing it mickey uh we're going to get to you shortly in a second can you just tell everyone but without any detail just what your job title is and what you do exactly i am a tv writer producer and uh and hopefully one of these days a uh, screenwriter producer dude that is that is amazing um i look forward i look forward to this very much if i was out in holler nation right now i would stay tuned for something like that <laughs> um anyways before we get going here this is the holler toast this is the part where uh we're going to toast right now then we're going to kick the show off so guys in the audience um everyone on the screen if you've got a drink now's the time to pick that thing up um and i have written something absolutely ridiculous uh as mickey noticed i wrote this about five minutes before the show so you know we'll just hope that this um sounds off this ridiculousness and uh and here we go glasses up by the way holler toast here we go guys okay driving by the old shoney's building that hasn't been in operation for years one can't help but notice the stench of stale biscuits rotten eggs and ribeyes soured fruits and general desperation Like something out of an old horror film, the lights still mysteriously flicker inside. Like a dim fire burning inside, the pale orange glow remains, everyone afraid to ask why. A brave soul approaches the run-down parking lot, moving overgrown bushes and weeds aside as he approaches the front door. It's a double padlock. There's no entrance. Ear to the door as he hears a low grumble, almost a monstrous murmur. He peers through a crack in the window and can't believe his eyes. 
It's the Shoney bear, but not as he remembers. The bear is enormous with large neon green glowing eyes covered in gravy and no longer fitting into his tiny red t-shirt. The bear devours rotting salad bar material. It's clear he's never left and it's terrifying. More, unlimited more salad and more, the, bell, the bear growls. The curious kid starts to run away but trips. More, more, more potato soup, all you can eat seafood. He hears the bear scream as he gathers himself and runs off. Guys, avoid Shoney's. The bear is very much alive and he's hungry. We took his Shoney's and he'll never forgive us. <laughs> Holler, guys, what's up? Holler Nation, are you guys alive out there? If you're alive, somebody please say something in the chat. We're going to say hi to you, shout you out. Really? You guys are being really quiet today. It's oddly quiet, but maybe they're just interested they're because, quiet. you know, for once we're not just like, hey, there's, there's, there's a comment. CJ Blosser in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I just caught up with CJ recently. Uh, CJ, we're glad that you made the show. Uh, cheers, brother. I've got bourbon in my uh, Glenn Karen as well. I hope you're doing the same. I heard heard he's got some Woodford out there. Uh, Mickey, there's a good question for you. Um, are you any type of avid uh, drinker? Do you miss some of the at-home uh, drinks? You were near the bourbon trail when you used to live here. Do you miss bourbon and things like that? Oh, man, I'm fully stocked with bourbon. I still, you know, it's funny. It's like, I, mean, I still was drinking it like a ton up until a couple of years ago. And again, I don't know if it's just like the, the weather change thing or like the similar to just like you're sort of in the vibe. It's like when you're in like, the, you know, when you're in the Florida Keys, you are all of a sudden like listening to Jimmy Buffett and you start drinking margaritas, <laughs> that, right? It's just like, so, uh, so I have like a lot of bourbon, so I love bourbon. Um, but then I start drinking a lot more tequila and, you know, margaritas and stuff out here because it's like, you know, sort of endless summer. Um, but I got, I've got a little Kentucky bourbon barrel ale that I'm drinking here, which ah. uh, I, think I love. So that's, I can find that out. Uh, I started drinking it when I was in Prestonsburg, Kentucky, uh, working there at a theater. And then, uh, they start guys, we're picking right back up where we were. We just lost it for a second there. Hey, the world of streaming, that's what happens. So Mickey, you were saying, uh, you picked up a bourbon L, uh, uh, barrel L luckily that you were able to find that. Um, yeah. Welcome back, man. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Um, That's good. High alcohol content, though. You got to be careful. Yeah. Well, this is where I was going to bring Cole in. So, um, you know, we've got Cole over here. He is our holler at a lawyer. We will do a segment um, here in a bit. Anyone that has any type of uh, legal questions, we will give you non-legally binding advice uh, from a real attorney. And that is Cole over here. Now, Cole's a Kentucky boy. Um, and Cole has the biggest bourbon selection that you've ever seen in your life. I'll almost guarantee it. I mean, he's rocking a Van Winkle in his collection and all kinds wow, of nice. Wait, what are you what are you drinking tonight? I'm drinking water tonight. It's oh uh, my god. It's been a rough all week. Lead up, all that lead up for the water. <laughs> but but I did just do a count of my bottles and I have 185 bottles. So um, holy shit. Yeah. So my my collection's there, but uh it's it's been a long week. It's been a really long week. So I'm just trying to hydrate and stay alive because I wanted, I wanted to join you guys and I didn't want to die halfway through the podcast. <laughs> well, Cole, I was going to ask, uh, is one of the reasons you need to hydrate so badly? Did you go too hard on the bourbon uh, the night before or what? <laughs> no, I've been going too hard on idiots that uh, I have to deal with on a daily basis at work. Mm. And, um, oh, yeah, it's real it, life. Yeah, real life. It's uh, the mental exhaustion than, more than the alcohol exhaust, which is usually what happens. Especially in this time, yeah, yeah. it's been thirty. I'm, I live in Florida, and it's been thirty-five degrees. 
Yeah, wow. we're all over the place right here. Yeah, we've got Cole down in Jacksonville, Florida. We, we got Gracie and myself up here in West Virginia. You know, Mickey's in LA, as we were saying earlier, but he's from the area originally. Now, Mickey, where are you from exactly originally? Somewhere in Ohio? From Ironton. Yeah, just down the road. Ironton. Yep. Yeah. And and so you said you moved from there about ten years ago. Did you live somewhere else after Ironton? Live somewhere else. I live. I grew up in Ironton. I went to college in Cincinnati, and then I lived in Chicago for about a year. Ooh. I lived in New York. Uh, for a while and sort of off and on for a bit uh, for probably you know, like 10 or 12 years and then then moved out here. So yeah, I've been kind of bounced around all over. Gotcha. Um, what gets someone into, and, and guys, if you're just joining right now, um, sorry, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty there for a second. The stream is back up. If you're in the chat, just say hi to us again. I saw you Becky out there. I saw you Dallas already, but I didn't get to throw your comments up yet. Um, everyone say hi. Uh, we've got Mickey here, a screenwriter from LA. And the question for you, Mickey, um, what gets someone started in such a profession? That's so interesting. I love writing, um, as you saw by my Shoney the Bear story uh, five minutes before the show. <laughs> but what yeah. gets, what gets someone into that? Just tell me the beginning, man. Yeah, sure. Well, that, by the way, that Shoney the Bear story started off like it was a little Twilight Zone there for a while. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, you never um, know. That's great. Um, you know, I, I just grew up loving stories like I when I was a super little kid I think when I was around five years old I love movies I love television I started telling people that I wanted to be an actor when I was super little um my my uh parents and my uncles had like big music collections so I would listen to a lot of music I would grow up listening to key you know these you know, DJs people that were on probably like before you guys were listening like Gary Music Miller and all these kind of people and I so, remember him yeah do you remember mm -hmm. Gary Music oh yeah I see him all the time and you know, Clint McElroy, all those kind of people. Yeah. But I love like the story songs. You know, there are things like Harry Chapin. He had this song called Taxi, and it was about this like middle aged man running into his high school girlfriend. He was a taxi driver and picked her up one night. And like it was just, you know, I knew even as a kid, like seven or eight years old, listening to 45, like this is supposed to be a really sad song. So I would sit there and listen to it and just like will myself into being sad, like acting the song as a little kid. Um, <laughs> And then, you know, like, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but for a long time when I was a kid, there was only one movie theater near me. It was Midtown Cinemas in Asheville. They had like three screens. And so if something came there, it was there for like the whole summer long. I saw E.T. over and over again. I probably saw it 10 times in the summer. Star Wars, going to see Star Wars. So they always tell people it was like my earliest memory as a human being was going to see Star Wars. Um, so I was always interested in it. And when I got in school, um, in, the, in high school, the uh, at, well, I was in the fifth grade. I did my first play at school. I did some community theater in Ashland when I was in uh, junior high. And then when I got into high school, Ironton did basically like one big musical a year. And uh, I, start, I, I was in all the musicals. I started taking voice lessons. I really wanted to go to school for musical theater. Uh, there's a great school up the river in Cincinnati, the conservatory of music there. Uh, and then while I got there, it was like, I got there right at the time when the sort of independent film boom was happening with like Quentin Tarantino. By the way, one of my all time favorite movies, Pulp Fiction. Yeah, absolutely. Live, by the way, I'm in Glendale. I live a block, uh, two blocks from the uh, exterior of Jackrabbit Slims. Epic. So it's just like down the street from me. And when I Epic. found out that day, that was one of the, the coolest fucking days uh, since I've been here, was realizing that I live that close to that. Um, so <laughs> a five hour milkshake, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, it's pretty fucking good. Um, <laughs> uh, so I started writing when I was in college. And, and basically, like, I was in a, a performance class. Uh, hey, Lindsay. Hey, cuz. Um, I was in yeah, a, there's uh, Lindsay right there. She's the one that gave the shout out to you, by the way. There you go. Yeah. Hey there. Um, so I was in this musical theater program at the conservatory. But my teachers were telling me, like, you are a character actor. You're really probably not going to work until you're in your 40s. And so um, I was going to see all these movies like Clerks and... Brothers McMullen and El Mariachi and, and Reservoir Dogs, all these movies that these were being made for like a lot less money than Star Wars and whatever. And uh, just started wanting to do that and started wanting to write those. I was like, my idea was like, well, I'll just start writing stuff for myself to perform. And uh, by the time I left school, I really wanted to be a writer more than I wanted to be an actor. And I was actually like over time just better at it and more disciplined at it. That's exactly what I was going to ask, how you kind of transition from one to the other right there. That's That's interesting. I'm interested to know why these... You know why these uh, these peers of you of yours told you that you were going to be more of a character actor that you wouldn't act to a certain. What, what's that about exactly? Well, I was always like about you know fifty pounds heavier than all the people I went to school with. <laughs> they were just all like they were. Uh, you know, I kind of always looked like Dom DeLuise even when I was like you know eighteen, nineteen years old. I was going to school where 
uh, a program with people who had been dancing their whole lives and stuff too. So true. When you're going to school for musical theater, it's like you know it's very, that's a school that very much is about turning out triple threats: people who can sing, dance, and act. True, true. Um, well, I wasn't a dance. I was never going to be a dancer. Like I, I basically look like this size my whole life, right? So, uh, so they were basically saying like the roles that you're going to be right for, you probably like you know will be in your 40s, like you know the the homicide detective or the you know whatever it is, like. Those things are typically like, you know, when you're younger, you're a leading man stuff. Um, and that just was not going to be my, my path. And, uh, and I was cool with that. There were a lot of actors that I love, people like Joe Montagna and um, people at the time, James Gandolfini. Yeah, Joe Montagna. He was playing these roles. I was like, those are the roles I would really want to play, you know. Uh, but, then they, but then more so they became like the roles I would want to write. Yeah, absolutely. Alan Brown, what is up? Uh, guys, check out Alan Brown. He's actually a local artist, uh, goes by Corduroy Brown, um, a really, really great local artist. We're going to have him back on the show. We've had him on before. Uh, he's one of our dear friends. Alan, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Um, Mickey, so, uh, you know, back back to the acting thing there. Um, that's that's so interesting. It's funny how life takes these odd turns um, because I grew up with such a different background. I grew up playing uh, four sports at Huntington High School, a large high school in the state. Um, it's kind of unheard of to play four varsity sports, but I did it. I was always busy with that. But deep down inside, everyone that knows me, just like you see at the poster behind me, they know that my passion is film. So it's like I've got this soft spot for this. I couldn't wait to talk to you about it. Um, and I think that you have a very interesting story right there. Uh, my question to you right now is how is COVID affecting you during all this and your work? Uh, you know, I was pretty lucky. I did a couple jobs um, that that sort of wrapped up right as it was starting. And I was in the middle of writing a script, uh, a pilot script for Apple because, you know, their, their streaming service. Um, so I was kind of I was working and the writing part of it didn't really slow down that much. Like I, everybody stopped in production. Um, I had you know friends who were shooting things and you know everything kind of shut down, but people were still buying stuff and 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 people were still pitching stuff. So everything like a lot of the writers' rooms, you know, I don't know like how much the, like you guys know or the people watching know about like the way the TV's made, but you know typically for a lot of the shows there's a writers' room and it's a bunch of people. Uh, you know, for a, a drama it could be anywhere like you know five, eight, ten people in a room working on the stories, writing on the scripts. For comedies, it could be much more. Um, and it's kind of like an office job. Like TV writing is is a little bit like an office job because everybody's together all day long while you're doing this. Um, all that stuff moved to Zoom, like went virtual. So a lot of my friends who were doing that, like they pivoted pretty quickly to doing Zoom. Um, and then the pitching started through Zoom too. So then I I, I pitched and sold a project with a co-creator uh, in the summertime. And, and it was the first time like I'd had to, we worked up a whole like visual presentation and it was sort of all this like new world of pitching, uh, pitching remotely and, trying to connect with people over the, over a computer and through the, uh, you know, tell your story through a lens. So it was, uh, it was pretty strained, um, but it didn't feel like things slowed down for me too much that way. And I, but I, what I think is, you know, what may happen here pretty soon is all those things that, that shut down production um, while they were still buying stuff. Well, now they're starting production up again. So all those things are going to go into the pipeline. So the writing stuff may slow down for a little bit. I don't know. So I'm, I've been, I mean, I've been pretty lucky just because I've been still busy and then, taking the opportunity to just like write some new stuff on my own trying to you know trying to do some new things and put some new stuff out there what genre are you writing and when you say you're writing stuff on your own uh i mean i love science fiction i just like most that's the, a big thing i love uh I, like uh, well again back to pulp fiction i was really a huge crime fiction fan early on too and i love like authors like elmore leonard and carl hyacin and these people uh, so that's a big that's a big passion of mine too. But when I broke in, I broke in with this show called Extant, um, that was a science fiction, uh, like a grounded sci-fi drama uh, on television. And you know, very often what happens is like when you break in with something, that becomes the thing that you do. That's the thing that people seek you out for. Uh, I got pretty lucky because it was the thing that I love. Like those are the movies that I would go see over and over again in Midtown or when Movies Ten opened or at the Keith Alby, you know, like going opening night and you know Friday night and watching. Lord of the Rings or the Matrix over and over again. Um, it, it's funny you say Lord of the Rings. I actually went to the Keith Albee and watched it on opening night. No joke. I was there. That was a, that was the greatest place in town to go see it. Man. It was like, sold out. One of, one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite movie going experiences. Was, well, when I was in high school, uh, a couple friends of mine and I, Rain Man. You know, I don't know if you remember Rain Man. Oh time. yeah, absolutely. Shot it was or it was like based on a guy who had lived in Huntington for a while. So yep. they did a premiere of it in Huntington. With Dustin Hoffman, wow. uh, and like, and the guy who it was sort of based on, 
uh, we were hoping Tom Cruise would show up, but my friend, we, we, we were in high school. We all bought tickets and we were sat in the balcony. It was the first time I'd ever been in there. That's was, epic. But, uh, but I went to see Spider-Man 2 there and it was jam-packed house opening weekend. Uh, the Tobey Maguire one. And, and that's one of my all-time favorite movie-going memories because it was just so fun. Yeah, and you know that the people out of town that that might be tuning in right now. Um, and again, guys, if you're tuning in, we've got Mickey Fisher. He's a screenwriter. He's in L.A. right now. He's from he's from the Huntington Ashland Ironton area. Uh, uh, to begin with, this is kind of how we got the connect. Um, very interesting story that he's telling here. But what I was going to say, Mickey, uh, for for people maybe from L.A. and Florida and other places that are tuning in, uh, when we say Keith Alby Theater, it's it's this historic theater that's in Huntington, West Virginia. It's what people like us grew up going to watch just regular movies, but um, that place, it, I can't even describe the beauty in that place. It, it has its own aura when you walk in. It's amazing. What a, what a beautiful theater, and we're, we're very lucky to have that. A lot of history there, too. When I, went, when I was in college in the musical theater program, they had a musical theater history class, and they talked about the Keith Albee circuit, like the vaudeville circuit, and I was so proud that we have one of those back home. I was like, I, I've been to these. I've been to a bunch of stuff here. Yeah, and you know we're lucky they kind of restored it a little bit, and so now, um, you know, now they're bringing acts through their martial artist series. But you know, COVID has fucked all of this up uh, tremendously. It's it's fucked up all the sports that I like to go to uh, and and watch. It's it, the traveling that I like to do, and uh, and definitely going to all of the martial artist series. I used to go to the international film festival that they still have there. Oh yeah. Um, last year we had bare naked ladies here and just random acts like that, like really yeah. really cool stuff at the Keith Albee. Um, anyways, I'm gonna queue up uh, a question from Holler Nation right here. But uh, before I do that, I feel like you and I have talked a lot. Uh, Gracie, um, tell me something about your day today. What did you, what's one thing you did today out of your day? One thing I did today, talked about my favorite uh, Avenger and uh, DC character. Really? And who is that? Uh, my favorite DC character is obviously Wonder Woman. Duh. Nice. And my Avenger, you know, I just don't know. Like we just really had this whole back and forth with me and these two four year four five year old boys. And we just really went back and forth about it. But I just don't know. Well, okay, I'll step in and answer for you. My favorite Marvel character is certainly Rocket Raccoon, obviously. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just a fancy trash panda. Cole, who is your favorite Marvel character? Well, if we're going to expand it, I'm just going to go out and say Deadpool. Deadpool is my oh, absolute favorite. That's a great answer, good. actually. This is that's well, actually a really good horror poll that we're playing right there. Actually, yeah, I'm a <laughs> big Ryan Reynolds fan to begin with, and I feel like he was made for Deadpool. Like I can't imagine a, a live action Deadpool with anyone other yeah. than Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, for sure. Now, Cole, we sort of mentioned it earlier, but you do collect bourbon, and you really do have the beefiest collection of anyone I know. Can you tell us? What's one of the latest bottles that you just purchased? Do a little braggadocious for yourself because I'm I'm fucking jealous. And Mickey's all the way in California. He's a little bit jealous. So make us jealous. Um, I just got a Buffalo Trace store pick from Total Wine today. But last week I got the uh, limited edition Four Roses 2020 batch, um, which is only released once a year and is an expensive bottle. Um, I've been hunting it down for a couple of weeks. And finally, one of the stores I go to a lot got one in and called me and saved it for me. So um, that was my big score the last few months. Now, for, for this is just a little aside, then we're going to get back to Mickey because a super interesting story here. Mickey, I still have a, a plenty of questions for you. CJ Blosser has got a question for you. We'll get to you in a second, CJ. Um, Cole, when you say store pick, for those that don't know what you're talking about with bourbon, explain that. So everyone knows, well, even if you don't know bourbon or anything, so let's just say that there is a bottle of Jim Beam. And because I'm just using a name where probably everyone's at least heard of what Jim Beam is. Well, stores will go and pick a specific barrel. Like they'll taste a few barrels and they'll be like, we like this barrel. So they'll get a bottle of Jim Beam with a sticker on it that says this was an exclusive barrel, single barrel pick by this store. So it's a one off. It, it could taste just like normal Jim Beam. It could be worse. Although I don't know why someone would pick a worse one, but most times it's going to have a very unique flavor that's going to be different than your normal thing. So they're highly sought after because that's one barrel. And once that one barrel is gone, that bottle will never exist again because it was a one off barrel. So that's why most people will buy two bottles, one to drink and one to save. That's a great explanation, man. And, you know, the bourbon world is so interesting. Yeah, see, like, I, I know that people don't realize that, but, you know, Cole and I, we, we collect bourbon. And, you know, the thing about it, 
Cole and I, we almost have like this small competition. It's unspoken of it, in everything that we do. <laughs> and, uh, but I can't compete. When it comes to bourbon, I can't compete. He's got me. For example, yeah. like, this is an example of a store pick. So you can see it's a single barrel select, and then the store has its logo in the middle. Hmm. Like you can't just go out and buy this. Like this was a one-time thing. Yeah, yeah. So, nice. Yeah, and so so again, you could be used to what Eagle Rare tastes like, but it might come across a little bit different when you get one of those store picks. Okay, Mickey, question from Holler Nation. This is CJ Blosser in the house. Here we go. CJ says, Mickey, do you believe COVID has started something where more feature films will be available to digital directly along with theater, or will it go back to normal once everything calms down? So kind of a two-part here. What's up? Well, I mean, I don't know if you saw the news yesterday, but Warner Brothers – had made uh, a deal with HBO Max where they're doing day and date. So it's going to, the, all their temple movies next year, the Matrix 4, all that stuff, you know, Dune, it's all going to drop on the same day on HBO Max as it is going to be in the theater. That's, it's, that's going to change it forever now. So that, that genie is out of the bottle. That's never. <coughs> um, Glad I have HBO Max. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are going to be having it here pretty soon. It's I'm on sure. my Christmas list now, turns out. Uh, I think that, you know, I was kind of, I was kind of interested to see where it was going to go because Disney's started to do a little bit of it during this year with Mulan and with um, some of their other movies. But I... I Trolls World Tour. Yeah, <laughs> Trolls World Tour. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I was kind of interested. And then Wonder Woman, I think that they were, you know, like they were talking about that, that was going to be a uh, sort of day and date, speaking of, which I was super excited about. Um, but I, I wasn't sure if it would really like if there would be like a, a major movement towards it. I think this with this Warner Brothers thing, like it's over. I mean, we're we're gonna be watching movies in our home and in the theater day in, day out for the rest of our lives. Yeah, so uh, well, there's a question. Is the theater gonna survive, man? I'm really I'm scared. Mm -hmm. I I love theater, you know. I I hope it does. I mean, I think they're gonna have to find ways to 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 uh make the experience <laughs> You know, like I think there's never going to be any substitute for the communal experience for a lot of people. Yes, trolls. I love you, Sam. I think that uh, there's never going to be any, uh, a substitute for the communal experience for me for a lot of those big movies. Like, if somebody on Twitter the other day was talking about, like, you know, what's your, you know, one of your all time favorite movie going memories? And for me, it was opening night of the Matrix in New York City, Sony Lincoln Square. And it was jam packed midnight. And the moment that Trinity like went up in the air and they did the bullet time thing around her and she kicked that guy, the place went crazy. You know, people were like out of their seats cheering and it was just like, I'll never forget that. Right. And you can't, you can't do that. In your epic. Epic. Yeah, epic. Exactly. So I think there are a lot of people who, you know, they can have much more control over it. Like if you have kids, you can put them to bed, you can stay home, you know, it'll be cheaper in some ways. Um, so I just think theaters got to just figure out, you know, like, figure out the way that uh, that they can survive in this. And maybe that means like bringing back movies to the big screen and creating events around them, uh, old movies and things like that, you know? Yeah. Sure. A lot of that down Our here. local movie theater here um, started that. <laughs> they do, like Wednesdays and Sunday afternoons, they would like do flashback movies. And it was really cool because they like took it way back. Like Dirty Dancing was one and like they would do the Harry Potter films and like during Christmas, like the Home Alones and all like the Grinch or whatever. And they were starting to do that here. And I think a lot of people went. Yeah, absolutely. I think I, I mean, that's a good yeah. So CJ says how uh, alcohol sells in theater. Well, you know, we've got that already. Maybe not here, but everywhere else we've got it. Um, he, here's an idea. How about events like Super Bowl? Start to use the theaters for, for things like that. It could all work. They, but like you were saying, Mickey, they, they almost they almost are forced to, to be creative at this point. It's like the blockbuster thing again either get creative or get left behind, right? That's kind of what it feels like right now. So um, I'm yeah. interested to see how they go because like you, I love that movie going experience. Actually, when you were uh, doing your Matrix flashback, it made me think of one of my favorite all-time movie experiences. I went and watched um, Avatar in 3D and I'm not really big on 3D movies. I mean, I, I am, but I'm not. Like, I, They're not the end-all be-all. They didn't end up being what we thought they were going to be, uh, for example. Yeah. But that one in particular, when they go to the Tree of Life where oh, yeah. uh, all the avatars are living those uh those little flurries that all float around they were like beside my face it was fucking crazy That's huge yeah <laughs> that was the craziest 3d thing i've ever seen in my life that followed by a close second i'm almost embarrassed to say this but it's too funny not to say this is the right podcast for it this closest thing that came the most 3d was jackass 3d when they oh, shot yeah. a dildo out of a cannon yeah. and i thought it was going to hit me right between the eyes and at the last second it just averted <laughs> yeah that was a brilliant use of 3d 
Um, Gracie Cole, do you guys have like a favorite movie theater experience that you can think of? Cole, I actually have one of your stories. It just popped in my head. Uh, one of your movie theater stories. So if you don't have one, I'm going to lead you and let you take it there. But I want to let you tell it the story. But I I want to say the things that I enjoyed about the theater were the random things that you weren't expecting. I think back to the time, Brian, where we were all sitting at the house and we were not doing anything. And we're like, hey, this movie called Zombieland or something supposed to be playing. Let's go watch it at midnight tonight. Yeah, yeah. Not expecting anything. And we all went and watched it. And we're like, wow, what a great movie. So it was just yeah. these unexpected things. Not like the, you know, when you go see things like the Marvel movies, you you pretty much know what you're expecting. But it's just the little yeah. movies that you're like, I don't know what to expect on this. And then you're just blown away. Like, I, I love that, that, <laughs> that thought. And then I like Brian's stories. As well. Yeah, <laughs> Gracie. Before I go, anything come to mind? We always went to the movies with my papa as kids, and at the Keith Albee. Like that will always be a vivid memory. But like, whenever I got older, and like the Harry Potter films came out, it's like your experience with the Matrix. Like it was the first showing. People were cheering and clapping and crying and making all of this noise, and I was like, "It's just amazing!" Like all of these people in one room. It's just because we loved the franchise we were excited about it yeah and people dressed up right probably like yeah oh yeah absolutely yeah th amazing. there's another yeah. good point yeah people dressing as their favorite characters yeah. all that shit goes to the wayside as well um lindsay out here says she went and saw dirty dancing the week they started that lindsay um, oh the why are not best friends like can we please hang out because we would be best <laughs> friends we would absolutely be best friends but okay. we went and saw driving cool, to the drive-in a lot <laughs> So yeah, true. true. I did go. Yeah. Have we all went to drive in theaters? Everyone on the screen? What, what's the first one you saw, Cole? I, I'll be honest with you. I don't remember because I just remember being little with my dad and being in the car and not remembering what. But I just remember, I remember the experience, but don't remember what I was watching. I was very little. I saw Edward Scissorhands as my first one. <gasps> wow. I love that movie so much. I know, I right? right? How about you, Mickey? First drive in? Grease. I mean, I'm so I'm older than you guys. So it was, yeah, it was Greece. But I, but when I was in high school, I mean, that was like a normal thing. So when I was in high school, because the one that was over like in, uh, you know, in Russell Flatwoods area, I think it was like $5 car load. And so it was literally that thing where you would just like cram, we would cram as many people as we could in my mom's minivan. And you <laughs> that's, know, trick. That's, like, trick. that's when you have a van and people are like, yes, let's go with a minivan. Guys. Exactly. Come on. My parents, God bless them. Cause they, I mean, they like that. I'm amazed that thing survived, but yeah, we would cram, you know, eight, 10 people in there, 12 people. And uh, yeah. And then as soon as you get there, you're, you're walking around and talking all night anyway. Like nobody was watching the movie, but yeah, that was a normal thing. Um. <laughs> um, you want to hear mine? Listen, you need to hear mine. <laughs> okay, go, go. Star Wars 1, Phantom Menace. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive, Gracie. Yeah. We were little, whenever it came out, and we parked in the front row, and there was a big grassy area in front of the ginormous screen. So we all just got a blanket and sat in the grass, or like laid in the grass, oh. and watched Star Wars. It was really cool. Awesome. Um, okay, guys, so I know Cole well enough that I've got one of his in-theater stories right here, and I and I can't wait to share it. I think of the, this is one of my movies that are near and dear to my heart, so I do pop it in every now and then. And I always think of Cole when I pop it on, because he once told me that when he was younger, he took a girl on a date. And he took her out to a movie, because that's what you did, you know, movie and, and dinner, that whole thing. So he takes her to see the movie when it's out in theater, which is impressive, by the way, Cole. Good, good choice on this. Big Fish is what he takes her to go see. And so, you know, they're enjoying this, like, great movie in theater. And all of a sudden, it gets toward, <laughs> Cole's already laughed. It gets towards the end. Spoiler alert, by the way, uh, it's been long enough. You should have already seen Big Fish, so I don't feel bad about spoiling this. But, you know, the grandfather dies in the end of this movie. It's heartbreaking. It pulls at your heartstrings. And this girl starts losing her shit that Cole has taken her on a date with like more than you even should for the movie. She's totally losing her shit. And Cole was like trying to really get to like, even like second base, like has like the hand on the leg. He's like trying to get there. This girl completely loses her shit. And finally he figures out what's going on. Unbeknownst to him, her grandfather had just died like the week before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But he doesn't know how it's going to end, you know, in all fairness. There was, there was no second date. Uh, <laughs> Not all movie fantastic. theaters are, the experiences are created. Exactly. I enjoyed the movie, though. At least there was that. At least it was a good movie. Oh, Big Fish is such a great movie. It's a great movie. Dallas out there says she saw Star Wars at the drive-in. 
Um, Dallas, by the way, this is a good little segue. Dallas was our camo CBD variety pack winner last week. Uh, we do want to mention, we do want to mention that Holler is proudly powered by camo CBD. Go to camocbd.com, use the offer code Jody, and that's all capital letters J O D I. You'll get free shipping. I highly recommend the CBD gummies. I'm a big believer in them. Um, I, I snack on those every weekend, AKA coming up tomorrow. I'm going to wake up and uh, CBD because it makes me feel good. It calms me down a little bit. And again, this is not THC. This is not going to fuck me up. It's not something that makes you fail a drug test, but we're proudly sponsored by Camo CBD and we like to give it away on the show, which we're going to do at the very end of the show. So if you hang around long enough, we will play 90s trivia. Um, Mickey, you're welcome to play along as well. Um, 90s sure. trivia and whoever wins, we're going to mail you a variety pack. You're going to get the two shots relax, revive. So one has caffeine, um, one doesn't, one helps you sleep a little bit better. And then you've got a pack of gummies as well. Um, CamoCBD.com. Also go to all their social medias and it's just at Camo CBD, just like it sounds. Um, Mickey, a couple more questions for you. And then we're actually going to scoot on to Holler Nation. It's what the podcast is all about. Um, so you had a short film um, called The King of Iron Town. You, did you help write this? What did you do? What's the story behind this? So it was a feature film. Uh, it was a full length feature. I shot it in Ironton. I wrote it and directed it. I was in it too. Speaking of, uh, I, I'm looking at it right now. I, I actually won the third place best feature at the Appalachian Film Festival. Amazing. Oh, that was really cool. Uh, yeah. It was the very first one that year. Um, yeah. You know, I, I was in my late 20s. I bought this book by Robert Rodriguez called Rebel Without a Crew. And in it, it was talking about like, um, writing around stuff that you know that you have things that you know assets and things that you know that you have to shoot with and so i knew that if i went back home to ironton to shoot it like if i could bring my friends there um a like anywhere you point the camera is a beautiful place to shoot you know like the True. Uh, places have a lot of character there's the river there are the mountains all that kind of stuff um i could walk down the street and ask a neighbor if i could borrow their motorcycle for a scene and they'd be like yeah here talk, talk to the geese, right so that's what we did we made that movie and then we did the premiere there and my my, most of my family was in it. Like both my grandmas who have passed away now were in it. And uh, it's awesome. Like I'm super proud. It was a very, very low budget movie. It was about $30,000, um, which, you know, is like a catering budget for a day on a, you know, another movie, a uh, bigger movie. But, um, but yeah, I'm really proud of it. This is good. It was about two brothers inspired by the going to see the tough man contest in Huntington. I, you know, I, I was going to ask if that's what your inspiration was. I'll get to that in a second. First, I'm going to say a uh, shout out to Samantha out there. She says she's going to order her camo CBD girl, go do it. And I'll tell you what, if you stick around for another uh, 30, 40 minutes here, you can win some as well. And then, you know, that's just double the goodness. Um, but Mickey back to the King of Iron Town. I'll tell you this. I, uh, <clears throat> and this is just me shooting you straight. Okay. Um, I clicked on the YouTube trailer <clears throat> and I thought, excuse me, I thought this was going to be like, you know, like you said, very low budget. And, you know, and, uh, like, I, I don't know. I saw that the movie was an hour and 30 minutes. I, I didn't have an hour and 30 minutes to watch it before the show. But I will say this. I clicked the trailer. I got into it. And I was like, this is inspired by Tough Man. It looked to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked like two brothers that may have been drifting apart were going to, like, meet in the ring. And were they going to meet and fight? Is that what they're going to? Yes, that's 100%. 100%. So see, don't tell me, no spoilers, but like for those <laughs> out there that want to watch this, go to YouTube. Uh, is that where you would recommend to go? YouTube? Sure. I mean, it's 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 out there, you know, different places right now. I'm not sure all the places you could watch it because I haven't really looked it up in a long time. Yeah, I looked it up. It's out there on YouTube, <laughs> the full link. Uh, the King of Iron Town is how it's typed out. Um, I want to see these two brothers come together in the ring after their uh, internal struggle because it looked like that's what was happening. I was yeah. into it, man. I liked it. I liked it. I think the movie. I think they based uh, Warrior off your movie, apparently, because that's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> you, your like if you have like you know twenty million dollars or whatever, you know, like that's the version of it that you uh, you get. I, but you know, I went to I went to the Tough Man quite a few times, and one time I went with my uncles, and there were these two brothers who were in the heavyweight division, and they were both winning their fights, and and in my head I was like, oh, how cool this be these two brothers if they end up in the championship bout. Mm. Um, what a great story that is, right? And then they got there and the fight was terrible. It was just like they kind of took it easy on each other. Uh, and so, you know, I did the thing that writers do. Like on the way home, I was like, what would have, what would have created the fight that I really wanted to see? Like what's the internal struggle between these two brothers that would have put them in the ring and want to take it all out and, you know, beat the shit out of each other over it? <laughs> I'm telling you guys, the trailer had me had me interested. And everybody that knows me, uh, they know I'm not going to say that. If I don't mean it, I mean it. Uh, Mickey, two important questions. We're going to move on to Holler Nation here. Um, the first important question question when you are pitching a a movie or a show at what point 
since we don't know this, we've never been in the room. You've been there. You've been on the Zoom calls. At what point do you or us that are pitching this, do we need to fear someone like stealing our idea? How does that get protected in a room like that? How? I mean, it's really, it's hard to do that. It's hard to get, there really is no way to, to really protect it because ideas are, they're, you know, they're ephemeral and malleable. You know, two people can have, we've seen this like with Tombstone and Wyatt Earp band. You know, it's like people can have the same ideas, right? Uh, Deep Impact and Armageddon, they're, like that, that stuff happens all the time. Um, I think the the actual theft thing happens a lot less than people than people might think it does, and so um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 even nowadays it's like, but but here's the thing, like you can't copyright an idea, but if you write the script and then you take the script out to sell and things like that too, then it's much harder for them to steal it if because then you could have characters to point to and scenes and things like that too. So um, it's not something I worry about, and so I mean, I don't if I have an idea that's a really serious idea, I don't put it out on social media because they don't like, you know, some other writer may take it or, or it's a good point. Uh, strip it for parts and steal something else. Um, but, um, so I, I don't do that, but other than that, like I, when I'm pitching and stuff or sending things around, I just kind of like, I just let, let it go. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Mickey, you're super interesting. One last question for you. And then we're going to shout out at holler. Um, it goes like this aliens. Are they real or not? Do you believe? Oh, Jesus. 100% believe they're real. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, without a doubt. I mean, to think that we, for us to think that we're the only uh, life in the universe <laughs> is the height of arrogance. So it's out there somewhere. It might be crazy why you laugh at <laughs> Brian, we'll always bring it around to aliens. It doesn't matter who it is. It just always circles back around to aliens every time. Listen, I maybe Brian's an alien. Look at him. I mean, this is my uh, artwork on my wall here, which is. Right. Uh, <laughs> It's one of the first pieces of artwork I bought. Find me, help me, protect me. So. Right, that guy believes in aliens. You can walk into person, Brian. <laughs> you can walk into that room and you know this guy believes in aliens. I, I figured you were going to go that direction. I know you're kind of a sci-fi lover. Uh, I'll, show you the, I'll show you the. Yeah, I mean, like I got aliens all over the place here. That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I feel like I have a million more questions. You're just this interesting. Maybe we'll just have to bring you on a second time. But for right now, um, we're going to start talking to Holler Nation. We've got some holler poles we got to blast through awesome. um, we got some shots fired um, eventually guys we're going to give away some camo cbd we're going to play 90s trivia so stick around win some camo cbd and let's move on link up at officialholler.com all right so um we've got a couple holler polls out there right now um gracie i know you did one via facebook um if you want to go ahead and take this time to pull your poll up um, you can shout out the people that uh, answered yours. I can go ahead and pull mine up. I'm going to start mine with some snap answers. Um, before we do that, let's go around right here on the podcast, and we'll we'll make this short and sweet. So, so Cole, Mickey, all you guys be ready here. Um, I want you guys to name something petty to take after a breakup. Man, you know, I already saw some of the Facebook answers for this, and y'all were being so... These stories are real. I thought people were just going to say something random like, it'd be petty to take the remote to the TV. I was expecting that. We're getting real life stories, guys. <laughs> so like, I'm kind of looking, right. looking forward to this. But you know what? I've changed my mind. I'm going to go to Holler Nation first because I've talked way too much. We'll eventually make it back to us. Let's get the wheels turning on our end, and then we'll, we'll talk about petty things um, that you could take after a breakup of a relationship. Let's kick this thing off um, with Kara Shea. Um, Kara Shea, uh, I believe in Georgia uh, is where this one's coming from. Kara Shea, what's up? I think something super petty would be Tupperware. Their collection of Tom Petty CDs. Their, their collection, collection of Tom, Tom Petty, Petty CDs. CDs. What? Okay, cool. <laughs> so, Tupperware and Tom Petty CDs. We're not going to get that answer twice. I'll almost guarantee you. Um, let's go to uh, LaCandice next. One time I took someone's pride I posted something that they did all over the internet. It went viral. Um, if you followed me on Twitter long enough, you know what I'm talking about. I know what she's talking about. So yeah, um, that was the most pettiest thing that I've done. And the guy still can't get on online, especially on Twitter. Shut up. Oh my I know God. exactly what she's talking about. Yeah. And Exactly what she's talking about. Took someone's pride, the oh. pain, the hurt. We're writing a storyline right now, Mickey. Oh my God. I know, yeah, exactly. Mickey, <laughs> as soon as we're done recording, I'll tell you what it was, and then we'll talk about if you really want to write it into a story or not. 
Um, let's, go, let's, go back to, uh, let's go back to Holler Nation real quick. Lindsay out there said it's super naive for us to think that we're the only ones in the universe. Uh, yeah, duh, girl, I agree. Same damn thing. Um, let's go with CJ next. He's out there in Holler Nation right now, but he also sent in a snap. CJ, what's up? Something petty after a breakup. How about, How about the, dog the dog that you bought her? Just take, Just take it. it. <laughs> it's not hers. I had that thought. I really did. I looked at my dog when I was typing the question. I was like, oh my God, this would never happen. I would just, you take the whole fucking house. I'm keeping the dog. I'll go home before you take the dog. You got a John Wick over that, man, for sure. (laughs) Yeah. You better meet me. uh, If if you're, if if you're going to take my dog, you better meet me in the tough man arena. We're fighting over it. (laughs) And we'll be, we'll, we'll be the king of iron town to part two. uh, Who, who wins the dog? Um, this next one comes from uh, Andy, a.k.a. the artist known as Jonathan. Check out his music, Jonathan. There was this one time where I got, I got really petty. petty. Well, we, didn't we didn't break up. up. We, we, we weren't really dating, dating but she pissed me off. And so, and so I went and found, found her most expensive earrings, earrings and, I and I took the backs off of them. And I just kept the backs of her earrings. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. That's, and, and that's a good fitting answer. That's a really good fitting so answer. Yeah. Yes. Hearing that's the that. worst. Oh, my that's God. That's the worst. Absolute. Absolute worst. Great pair of earrings. Cape on the backs. is annoying. <laughs> Gracie, I'm really multitasking right now. If you could write down some of these epic ones like earring backs, I really want to make it back to that right now at the at the 37-minute mark. Um, next one comes from Rachel. I'm going to assume this is like a real bad breakup. And, and I'm, 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 I'm going to take all the stuff. stuff. I'm going to take your toothbrush. I'm going to take your soap, soap your vitamins, vitamins your toilet paper. paper. Let's, Let's be, be real. real. I, bought I bought that shit, shit anyway. anyway. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. TP's mine, bitch. Good luck with your ass. <laughs> I wouldn't mess with her. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to try to just blow through all my snap answers because I'm just going to make it one round of this. Uh, Lindsay, you're up next. So one of my exes broke up with me on my birthday several years back and he had already purchased my birthday gift for me literally on my birthday is when this happened. Uh, it was my favorite perfume at the time. And I remember I had gone to his house to gather up all of my things. And as I was blocking out the door, I remembered about the birthday gift. So he turned around, grabbed it off of his dresser, slapped him in the face grabbed his favorite flannel, flannel and walked out the door and I still have his flannel to this day. That does not sound like a fun breakup. That sounds horrible. Um, <laughs> was nice. I, like that. I have, I have actually, uh, thanks. I to, enjoyed that one. Lindsay. <laughs> crazy one. That's a very we should crazy. be besties. What are you doing tomorrow afternoon? Should we go to Oscars? Look, Brandy out there says the silverware. And I you know what, Brandy, I, I had that thought. I thought about like the utensils and the plates and, and things like that if you live together. Because if you bought them, it's like you kind of want to take them. But like that's just – you in a breakup where you live together, you just need to get the fuck out of the house and just like never look <laughs> back. But like <laughs> – seriously. Um, next one comes from Alan. I took the speedway points. Yes, sir. All the points accumulated on a card for many years. I took them and got myself some gas, some speedway dogs, and a big gulp. Hell yeah. Gracie, please write down. I am right now. It's the 39-minute mark right now. Um, Okay, so a couple more here. We might have – oh, my God. We've got a couple text answers coming in from Snap. This is Rachel. She says – I can't even believe what I'm reading right now. She says every single left or right shoe. So she takes the opposite <laughs> shoe. That's petty as fuck. Yeah. She says she took all of the chargers slash power strips. She says, how about take your toothbrush plus theirs also plus the toothpaste? I Guys, don't date Rachel. This is this is scary. <laughs> this is not, this no. is not Rachel. Just, don't treat like, her badly oh, and have a breakup. There you go. <laughs> right. Gracie's on. <laughs> okay, we lost Gracie for a minute. We'll get back to her in a second. Um, so we've got an answer from Birdie. She says, My ex kept my entire high school and college art portfolio and refuses to give it back. Wow. Hmm. Art portfolio? What are you gonna do with that, bro? He probably just threw it away and he says he refuses to give it back. He probably just tossed it. Um Pluto says my boss has this hilarious on again, off again relationship with this girl, and one day they broke up. And he went to work like normal, went home for his lunch break for a Hot Pocket just to find out the bitch stole the microwave. So no more Hot Pockets. 
We're bringing Gracie back right now. That's why the screen flipped back around. Gracie, uh, welcome back. We'll see you in a minute here as it loads up. Um, this one comes from Jenny, and you can snap her, by the way, my favorite all-time snap name, at God damn it, Jenny. Um, Jenny <laughs> says, the entire gaming console controllers. So just the controllers to the gaming console, that would be pretty fucking diabolical. I totally agree. Um, Nikki, uh, I wouldn't take something, but I would definitely be petty. Maybe use his toothbrush to clean the toilet. And Selena says, I would take all of his socks. <laughs> um, and underwear. Yeah, that, that would be diabolical, yeah. right? Um, so uh, I just thought of my story. We'll go around the table here. Um, I actually did this. This is a real breakup story. I had a girl... Um, and Mickey, by the way, she lived in California. It was one of my first girlfriends at Marshall. We got very serious. <laughs> I was going to move out to Cole's already laughing. This guy Cole. knows me too well. Yes. I was going to move out to San Diego for a hot minute to the point Brian, where Brian, as, as your holler at a lawyer, I would recommend not telling all the stories. <laughs> <laughs> I will omit parts of the story. Cole, thank you so much okay. for being here for me. Uh, this mm -hmm. is why we have the guy. You know what I mean? That's why you got to have legal side. Uh, but uh, anyway, she was going to move me out to San Diego. Her parents bought me a plane ticket, actually. Uh, flew me out there. We we uh, house shopped all kinds of craziness. And I was so young, Mickey. I was like 22 years old. I'm way too right. young to know what the hell I'm looking for out there. I'm yeah. from Huntington, West Virginia, born and raised. Um, she was really hot. So I gave it a chance. <laughs> I gave it a real solid chance. But anyways, she had bought me a digital camera for my birthday. And uh, back that's back when you had to buy a digital camera separate from your cell phone because yeah. that's what everybody did. You always carried one in your pocket, right? And I was a very avid picture taker. I love taking my camera everywhere. She had also slapped the Best Buy warranty on the camera because she knew I took my camera so many places I would always drop it and, and break it and things like that. So she puts <laughs> Gracie, Whoa. I can see what you see. We'll get there, okay? But like, um, <laughs> no, I uh, she, help it. she paid like an extra 120 bucks to put this uh, warranty on my digital camera, and uh, we broke up very shortly after this. And I sat around and started thinking, um, you know, that warranty it's under my name because she put it under my name. I went to Best Buy and I told them, I said, hey guys, I lost the camera, which I didn't. I still had the camera. I said, hey guys, I lost the camera. Um, I need to cash back that warranty because I don't want to keep the warranty anymore. I just bought this camera like a month ago and they were like, sure, no problem. Would you like that in cash? And I said, absolutely. So they handed me like 120 bucks plus I still had the camera. God, that was so petty. Can't believe I did that. Um, you've got, you've got Woolham out here. He was the co-conspirator and you know, Woolham, um, we're not going to go, we're not going to go there right now, but Woolham did help me um, co-conspire in a way as part of this breakup guys. It's way more than a holler podcast could ever do. We'll just leave it. Um, can, can any of you, do any of you have a petty breakup story? Somebody go. Jesus, I don't have a story, but I would just say that I think the most petty thing that someone can do in breakups, I know many people that have done it, is you take their sibling. So they break up with you and you start wow. dating their sibling. Oh my God. <laughs> that is the most oh petty God. thing ever. Just to be like. I got your brother. I got your sister because you broke up with me or something. Nikki, we have screenwriting gold right now. We need to really be child. I know, I know. <laughs> fantastic. Um, Gracie, Petty, go. This is like your middle name is Petty. It's not. Yeah. I only have two months. Okay. I don't know if this is Petty. It's kind of, it might be honest, honestly kind of weird. So um, I still got to see their kid after we broke up because the baby mama and I got along. So, haha, -ha, I still got to see your kid. Uh, you took like <laughs> kids like feelings from them. Yeah, like, ha, huh, I still get to see your kid suck my dick. No, I'm but really. Wolf took well, a cousin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't see that. Leah, let's throw that up there. Brandon Wolf says, I took a cousin. <laughs> no, I think like something petty to take would be like the toilet paper. Yeah. Like, Straight taking it all, and right now toilet paper is like gold. So yeah, yeah, totally agree. Jack all the relationship. I mean, I, well, here's the, thing. I, the story that I'm thinking of is I was I think I was the person who broke up with this person, uh, so it was really just like a dick move. But I had their Blockbuster card back when Blockbuster was around, and I still had it like a few weeks after we broke up, and I used it to rent movies for a while, and then <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot to take the movies back. Oh, uh, shit. Up, like astronomical. Yeah. And then she saw me in the street one day. This is like back when I was in college. And she was like, Hey, do you have my fucking blockbuster card? I was like, Oh, shit. <laughs> and, now, and now she can't purchase a house because her credit is ruined. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
I was an idiot. I was an idiot. I will apologize to her if I see her. You know, the modern uh, the modern equation of this is you would take like their Netflix. You know what I mean? You would never. I was just taking that. that. Exactly. Um, Nikki, I, that I, selling sunset. Right. I found my ball <laughs> car when I was cleaning the other day. I kept it in my drawer. I'm never losing that thing. It's yeah, that, pretty well, epic. Um, Gracie, it's time to talk about your holler poll. You had one this evening, and then we'll scoot on to uh, what's fired. What's up? So my holler poll was in reference to competition. Is it worse to lose or end in a tie, and why? It's a great question. So I'll read some answers first, and then we can just go around. Absolutely. So Fran, my sister, says, if it's something I'm not great at, I don't mind to lose or don't mind to tie. If it's something I'm pretty good at, I need to win. Also depends on my opponent. Like, I don't need to win against my students. They can win or we can tie. But I need to win against my husband. Ending in a tie is not an option. <laughs> I know I'm going to get winning is the only option. Like, this is what I'm just going to get. Yeah, yeah. Lindsay says ending in a tie because there's no real winner. Then it feels like all of the hard work that everyone did was for nothing. Plus, if you're the winner, you obviously feel super great. If you're the loser, you have the opportunity con to congratulate the other person. It's like making it to the top of a hill on a roller coaster. But instead of going over the hill, it just ends. Mm -hmm. Dallas, a.k.a. Mom, so, says depends on the competition. Sometimes when one loses, one really wins and sent the wiki face. Oh, so. what a mom answer. Oh, mom, come on. Um, Samantha says, and in a tie, there's always a winner. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, that's what I guess that's a glass half full answer. Yeah. And Akia says tie by far. It's like getting a participation trophy without the trophy. That really, and I think I'm going to stop there because I know we'll go another round because okay. I only did one on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll end with our Facebook answers. Um, and that's fine. So around, around the horn right here, Gracie, what is your answer to your own poll question? Absolutely ended a tie is the worst thing because I'm going to win or I'm just going to have to lose. There's no in between. Like a clear, you, know, you need a definition we, is what you need. We all know that there's no gray area with my body. I'm either going to kick your ass. Or I'm just going to have to take the L. I got you. I got you. Cole, what about you? I've never lost or tied at anything in my life. I always win. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, and Mickey, we're down to you now. <laughs> and there's a lot. Never won. So I would love to know what it's like to even tie. Right? Yeah. Well, you guys can balance each other out. You know, you're, you're shooting 500 now. We um, tied. <laughs> you tied. You fucking tied. <laughs> oh, now there's a tie. Now Holy we're at the top shit. of the hill. <laughs> Holy shit. We've got, uh, we've got Samantha out here. She says, let's pull this up here. Oh, she's changing her answer. She says, never end with a tie. Need a winner. I tried to answer during work. <laughs> oh, good. We got you, Samantha. We got you. Um, so my answer to this, I think is going to surprise you guys that know me so well. You're probably thinking I'm going to be like, fuck ties. It's got to be a defined answer. But the truth is, I'm going to try to stay scientific with my answer. I think I'll choose a tie because in, in standings in sports, a tie counts for more points than a loss. So I'm trying to keep my team above uh, average. So I'll take the tie. I'm not happy with it. Ties are not fun. I'm not happy with it, but tie it is. So, um, Well, my real answer on that is I would rather lose because I feel like if you tie, then you're like, eh, I was close enough. Or I feel like if you lose, especially someone like Brian, for example, yeah. is going to make that way more personal and use it as way yeah. more motivation. True. Yeah. I'll be better if I lose. You're right. I'll be better off just to lose. And get better. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Woolham says, <laughs> "There's a time for the game of contest." Gonna be a time for the game of contest. No, no, we're we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, there's definitely gonna be a winner for the game of contest, and we're gonna mail that out to you guys. Stick around. Um, Lindsay is calling bullshit on me. <laughs> Sorry, guys, My, I'm being attacked right now personally. Let's scoot on to a segment we call "Shots Fired." Everyone out there, pour yourself a shot. It's time to take a shot of something while firing a shot about something. Here we go. All right, guys, so shots fired. Uh, again, the segment where we're going to bitch about something and then take a shot of something. Um, I'll go ahead and kick this thing off since I'm the one talking. Um, Mickey, let's see if you can relate to this. Um, or fuck anybody, actually. This is really annoying. Um, I, I've actually had this talk with Lindsay out there in Holler Nation. Um, this is really annoying to me. People 
who steal badass handles. Like I'm talking about like an at, like a Twitter at or an Instagram at. Um, they go steal a really badass name and then they just never use it. It just fucking sits there. <laughs> what the that about? Like if you're going to take it from me, if I go and see that the username that I want is taken, I hope that you're using it. When I go there and that account has sat there for like seven years, I want to reach through the, the screen and choke you out. Fuck you, man. Why would you take that name and not use it? You feel me? Anybody? The, the worst part underscore is Brian it's underscore show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to be. Yeah, Mickey, I used to be the the underscore Brian underscore show on Twitter. Because some fuck took the Brian show and didn't use it. So, <laughs> that guy, there's only room for one Brian show, and that's me. Okay, so, um, I'm taking a shot to that. I'm taking a shot to that. Cheers. <laughs> Bullet bourbon tonight, by the way. That's what's in my Glen Cairn. Uh, Bullet always Le does. Lacandis. Lacandis in the house says, "Hey fuckers." <laughs> <laughs> nice little lead-in. Uh, Cole, fire a shot about something. What's up? First off, I'm going nah, to uh, show you what I'm drinking oh, here. Fuck tonight. you, dude. He knows I want that <laughs> bottle so bad. I've been looking for that Elmer T, and he's flexing on us right now. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's flexing. <laughs> My um, my shots fired is going to be one of my least favorite type of people, and that is the selfish people and the people that make sure that everything revolves around them. They're untrustworthy. You can't depend on them for anything. And every time you talk to them, it always is about them. You could be like, hey, I broke my foot. And they could be like, I sprained my ankle one time. Let me tell you how my sprained ankle is worse than your broken foot. Or the people that no matter what you say, they can always one up you. So just that general personality type is what I'm doing my shots fired on. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cheers to that. <laughs> Gracie, you're up next. Shots fired. What's up? Shots fired at classes that are only offered certain semesters. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. Teachers, blah blah blah, bullshit, blah blah blah. It still mm -hmm. pisses me off. Fuck it. Fuck classes being only offered certain semesters. That's it. That's my shots fired. Yeah, absolutely. You're right about that. That's a great shot fired. <laughs> uh, Mickey, shots fired. You know, I went to Total Wine yesterday to get this uh, Kentucky bourbon barrel ale. I also bought some Virginia salted peanuts. Some one of my favorite kind of peanuts. And my shots fired is when people sell nuts that have gone bad. Oh, I have that like rant bad, nut. bad mm. nuts, man. And when you get them home and then you try them and the, it's like, it's too late. Like, you know what? I'm not, and I'm not going to take a tin of Virginia peanuts back to total wine <laughs> and more. I'd be like, I want my money back for these nuts. So it's just waste of money. So I throw them away. Shots fired. Shots fired. Ba hashtag bad nuts, Gracie. No bad hashtag nuts. Bad. Just like Shoney the Bear's salad bar, those, those nuts have gone rotten. <laughs> it's it's disturbing. I'm it gonna is. have nightmares from that story, guys. If you missed the beginning of the show, I, I wrote something just really stupid five minutes before the show. Go back and listen to it. We got Lindsay out here with the shots fired. That means we all have to take another shot, guys. Uh, Lindsay, shots fired. People who put emojis after every word in a post. I already read the word, so why are you putting the corresponding emoji after the fucking word? So she's got a good point. Like if you said, uh, "Here comes some hugs." So just share my response to her. <laughs> oh, of course, you got petty. Petty ass Gracie out here. Petty Betty. <laughs> you gotta love this show. You Shot fired. Oscars tomorrow. Shots fired. Shots fired. Okay, we got one more late one coming in. Uh, last second here. This is CJ. My shots <laughs> fired. The people that come to buy a thirty thousand dollar vehicle with zero dollars cash down and no trade and expect a two hundred and fifty dollar a month payment. What are you thinking? The bank is going to finance a car for fifteen year fixed loan like a house. That emoji was for you. <laughs> it even throws the emoji. See, we're coming full circle right here with the whole show. But CJ is a car salesman. Um, I would actually like to get him on the show sometime. He'd be very interesting on the show. I and uh, feelings, that's his shots fired. Um, all right, guys, that's a great. Oh, wow, wow, a great wow, little wow. Uh, version of shots fired right there. Let's move on to open up some more holler posts. Uh, we're going to go really quickly with our holler post. Gracie, have yours ready. You're going to go <laughs> first. And then uh, we're getting right into the camo CBD giveaway. So here we go. Okay. okay. Me first. 
Send your dick pics to Gracie at officialholler.com. You heard it here first. Anyways, Gracie, I haven't what? heard that stab in a while. Have you heard <laughs> the eggplant emoji after the word dick? That's what we just learned. Ethan, oh, why does why is there no dick talk? Hi, what? <laughs> what? Why are you talking Ethan, about this? Brandon started it. <laughs> Gracie, uh, let's just get back to the Ethan holiday. Says, Ethan says, definitely worse to end in a tie. Screw that crap. You're either a winner or a loser. A tie to me is like getting a trophy for participating so that nobody is left out. Ainsley says, I agree with Fran. Depends on the opponent. With my boyfriend, winning is important, but with my friends, I really don't care one way or the other. LaCandice <laughs> says, no competition at all. Just have fun. Very LaCandice. Then Brian and LaCandice argue. It's a good time. Um, Shantae says, definitely worse to end in a tie. Mike says, end in a tie is worse. Brandon Hurley says, tie. Always tie. It's the fucking worst because there's no winner or loser. And Josh Smith says, ties are bullshit. And that's <laughs> the end of my thing. That's all. That's um, all I got. I just thank you, Gracie, for that. That was a wonderful holler poll, by the way. I really enjoyed all the answers to hey, that. Uh, are you proud of me for having a good holler? I really am proud of you. Hey, a dog has entered the screen. I believe her name is Wednesday. Wednesday. That's little weenie, little weenie Wednesday has entered the chat. There she is in all her glory. Hello, Wednesday. We are so happy to have you here, Wednesday. Oh, I thought she would perk up. Nope. I know her ears did a little thing. She did a little bit. Um, so anyways, uh, guys, I got some great answers out in Facebook world. Um, let's go with them real quick. This is Nick. I'm going to talk really fast here. Here we go. Nick Michael says, shower curtain. You've never felt like less of a man until you've had to huddle in the corner of your shower quickly. I felt violated and hurt. And the spoons and forks. She took it all. Rough times. <laughs> Uh, Nick is also a podcast host of a show called The Turtle and the Bear. Type it in just like it sounds. Go find them on Facebook. They stream on Wednesday nights, I believe. Uh, kind of like this podcast. If you like us, you're going to love them. The Turtle and the Bear. Um, Anne Marie out here, she says, One year near Christmas, I broke up with a guy, and he opened all of his Christmas presents I had wrapped under the tree and then bounced with all of them while I was at work. Um, Kate, what says, Kate says, I got divorced back when they were limiting data. But I had grand I had been grandfathered into an unlimited data plan. I went to ATT with a general power of attorney to ensure that I was the one keeping the data plan. <laughs> Holy shit. That's brilliant. That's yeah. absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Respect for that. Brittany Bryant says, My friend said she took my toothbrush and my Q-tips. Um, Jonathan Childers says cologne. Um, Kaylee uh, says, I bought my ex a brand new headset for his Xbox because his old one sucked. And the day we broke up, I snatched it for my PS4 because my headset also sucked. Um, guys, I'm going to take this opportunity to let you know Kaylee is a digital artist in the area, and she's damn good. If you go to my Twitter, at holler at Brian, and look at my Avi, Kaylee is the one that created that. Um, she does digital art for 20 bucks. If you like my Avi, she'll do one for you for 20 bucks. Um, I believe Lindsay in the chat could at you uh, her Instagram. Lindsay, if you don't mind doing that out in Holler Nation, um, let's give Kaylee a shout out for that. Uh, give her a little bit of business. Digital art, I'm telling you guys, go to my Twitter, at Holler at Brian. Check it out. Um, JJ Waters says, the batteries out of all the remotes and the junk drawer. That's fucked up. Yeah, that's petty. Um, Brian Davis says, the chargers. Uh, Brandon Hurley says, a sweatshirt. Eric uh, says, the batteries. So again, batteries. Um, Jen Tackett says, my goats. <laughs> Mike, see Mickey where these answers are coming from. Welcome yep. back home, brother. I love it. Uh, Michael T. Jet says all the uh, Michael T. Jet says all the feminine products. Um, that's a dick was, move, Mike. That's a fuck, fuck, man, that's really I couldn't Straight do that. up dick move. That's so mean. I couldn't do it. Um, this is one of my favorites. Okay, Brandon Woolham comes into the chat and says a Boba Flex T-shirt. That's an inside joke because I actually had an ex girlfriend take my favorite Boba Flex T-shirt which was one of my favorite local bands. And that was near and dear to my heart. You can't buy the t-shirt anymore. It's gone forever. I have bitched about it for over a decade because that's how long ago we broke up. I ended up just going ahead and tagging the ex in this post. So <laughs> she, then comes, she then comes in and she goes, I still sleep in it every night. And she texted me a photo of the shirt. <laughs> that's so, excellent. So Woolham says, uh, you're the new guy in your life might not like to hear where that shirt came from. And my ex goes, I'll give it back to him. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. I'm not scared to tag an ex. I'll tag them all. I'll do it. I don't give a shit. Um, Samantha out there says as petty as my internet, uh, my box sucks when you need internet to have a phone. Um, and lastly, Jonathan Childers says, Oh, by the way, and porn. 
Um, I don't know how, I guess, I guess Jonathan Childers is taking like the old school porn, like the VHS or something. I mean, like just go stream it these days. Why would you have to go do that? I don't know. Um, that's all the answers. Thank you so much, Holler Nation. It's time to fucking win some camo CBD. Let's scoot onto that section. Listen to all of our past episodes at officialholler.com. Gracie, get your notepad ready. This is 90s trivia. First one to three correct answers is going to win the camo variety pack. Make sure that you message us your address, uh, your full address and your name. Um, we're going to mail them to you. Um, Gracie's going to keep track real time in the real chat, unlike the chat that I'm looking at in the program here. Um, everyone is eligible to win this round except for Dallas. She won last week. Um, by That's the way, right. before we do that, that digital artist that I told you about, Kaylee out there, at Pollencore on Instagram. Um, go check out her art. 20 bucks, you get a new Abby, and it's brilliant. It's fantastic. Fuck it, I'll probably buy another one after the show. That's how good she is. Go check her out. Um, okay, so 90s trivia. Time to win some camo CBD. Um, here we go. First one to type in the correct answer is getting a point. What did boxer Mike Tyson do in 1997 when he realized his opponent, Evander Holyfield, was about to defeat him again? What did Mike Tyson do to Evander Holyfield in the night? Mickey, you're uh, you're more than welcome to type in the chat. I'll, I'll put it that way instead of uh, being verbal. I feel like I'm going to let, let this one roll by. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. So we got Woolham out there, uh, I believe, with answer number one. Gracie, am I correct? Yep. So uh, – Gracie, how does that look on your end as far as the chats rolling in? Did, did Woolen beat uh, CJ? Yes. Okay, gotcha. So again, answer bit ear, one point to Woolen. Mickey, you're right. Um, there probably is a little bit of a lag, so maybe give yourself three seconds, and then you can type, and you can compete if you want to. Yeah, um, no worries. Do I do it in the host chat here? Do I do this? Okay. Um, is there a way for you to public chat on this app, or no? I don't know what your screen looks like. It looks like, oh, no, no worries. Ah. Uh, Okay, gotcha. Sorry. You have to watch the live. You can get it on Facebook. Sorry. Well, maybe set this one out. Let someone else win, but you can you can always give the answer afterwards. Okay, guys, next question. Here we go. Brandon Woolham is up one point on the board. Um, okay, guys. What was the name of Sonic the Hedgehog's sidekick? We were just talking about Sonic the Hedgehog today. Really? It's like freaking crickets in the chat right now. The name of Sonic the Hedgehog's sidekick. What was his what was his little pal's name? Okay, I think we've got an answer, Gracie. Let me know. Is it we in there? Do. Is it Bruce? Yep. Oh shit. Sorry, I clicked CJ. The answers are flying in. Uh Bruce. Bruce got it with Tails. Well done, I Bruce. Right. I didn't I, I was like, is it Tails? I'm glad yeah. I got that one. Mickey, Knuckles, you know that one? With some other people, it's what probably what you were thinking was Knuckles. He's the redhead. Oh right? yeah, that's a good point actually. Uh, Mickey, did you know that answer? No. Okay, got you. Um, I did not. All right, guys. Nineties trivia for Camo CBD. First one to three. Here's the next question: Which Spanish song by Los Del Rio spawned a dance craze in the nineties? <laughs> Name that song by Los Del Rio, the dance crave. Fun fact, I went to the home football homecoming dance in second grade with my best friend in second grade, and I danced to it, and Brandon Woolham was the first one to answer. Okay, so look, I'm going to show you this. Woolham, Woolham, shit, these are flying in. Good Lord. <laughs> Good Lord, these are flying in. Um, so Woolham was the first to answer with Macarena, <laughs> but here's my here's my favorite answer by LaCanda. <laughs> Macedonia. <laughs> <laughs> Damn the and she did it again twice. Twice she <laughs> auto correct <about> her. <laughs> yeah, she followed that up with Macedonic. Uh, <laughs> again, the incorrect answer. So it sounds like Woolham is leading the way with two points, trying to get him some camo CBD mailed to Nashville. Brandon Woolham out of Nashville. Um, Lindsay is saying what everybody's feeling. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. So this next one, which if famous not first or last, Lindsay? Come on, <laughs> no CBD. Here we go. Which famous rap star was shot in Las Vegas in September 1996? Pretty epic moment from the 90s. Still, still vibrates through the culture today. 
Which 90s rap star was shot in Las Vegas in 1996? They're going to fly in so fast right here. Let's get some more autocorrects. Uh, I think maybe LaCandice may have got that one. Did she? Let me know. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to be honest. I don't know which one it was. Well, which one's stacked on top of the other one, Gracie, on your end? I like how Willem answered both, just in I case. I don't know what the answer is, Brian. You have to tell me what oh, the answer is. The correct answer is Tupac, Gracie. Okay, then it was LaCandice. All right. There's no autocorrect on that. Hey, LaCandice, autocorrect ain't stealing your shine on this one. We got a good competition out here right now. This is good. What's I know. Good? Brandon, Willem, two. Bruce, one. LaCandice, one. Nice. Very nice. I didn't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. You're, you guys are still behind to Brandon Woolham out of Nashville. One more. He's going to take the camo CBD. Here we go. Next question. Candace, don't yell at me. What was the name of the first animal to be successfully cloned in 1996? Wow. Lots of stuff in 1996. Uh, Tupac died and we uh, cloned a farm animal. <laughs> Fuck it. Why not? Send it to me. Clone that motherfucker. Send it. <laughs> Even I know this one. I know this answer to this one. So again, what was the name of the first Bruce. animal? Bruce got it. What was the name, you guys? Not what it was. <laughs> Lacandus <Lacanda>, sheep. <laughs> yeah, Lacandus went with the name sheep. Uh, that's incorrect. Bruce got it with Dolly. It was it was a sheep, but Dolly the, the sheep name was Dolly. Dolly the sheep. Um, Gracie, give us a score update. What's up? Brandon two, Bruce two, Lacandus one. Ooh, here we go. Um, CJ coming in last minute with the word mouse. Uh, <laughs> very wrong all the way around. That's okay though. And once again, Lindsay in the crowd with a solid fuck. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Flipping through these. It's got to be good because somebody's about to win it right now. It's got to be good. Still looking. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Which character did Dustin Diamond play in Saved by the Bell? Dustin Diamond, the actor. We had to go with that. We had Mickey on here, okay? That's right up his alley. Of course, Mickey knows this one right away. Oh, yeah. He also was in Huntington like a few or like 10 years ago. And he also did like some celebrity boxing at one point, which also he goes did. back around to Mickey's right. story. <laughs> he did. Yes, I think we've got Brandon Willem with the win. Was that number three for her? Brandon, yes. Oh, oh, that was not. Sorry, shit. Um, hold on. I'm trying. There he is. So Brandon came in before LaCandice, correct? Yes. On yeah. my screen, yes. Um, Willem spelled it a little bit wrong, but that's okay. It's more of a shriek, but you know, we get what you were saying. We're not gonna be that picky. Um, speaking of uh, CJ typed the word uh, a creech, and you know that's that's also wrong. That's fine. We lost Cole here for a minute. We'll get him back. We'll get him right what back. Day. What a day to lose people, <laughs> guys! Thank you so much for playing along. Camo CBD, Brandon Woolham, it's getting mailed your way. We're bringing Cole back in here in three, two, one. Um, so that's everything, Mickey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of this show. You were by far um, one of the most interesting guests that we've ever chatted with. I had so much more to ask you. I think I'm going to get your contact if you don't mind. And I might for just sure. catch you every now and then, man. I would really. That was so it. fun. Yeah. Thanks for um, having me. Yeah. No, no, no problem at all. Um, can I ask you, are things safe out there in LA right now? Do you feel like odd? Do you feel scared when you go out? What's going on, man? No, you know, LA was one of the like first to really go on lockdown. And now we're back on a pretty big lockdown uh had it had it into it so people have been taking it pretty seriously here which is good so i mean i feel pretty safe but we just don't do a whole lot it's, it's groundhog's day we're like yeah we're true. Hot, we that's get coffee we walk the dog we're in yeah so uh, yeah so we're hanging in there that's very true dallas says the best part of the show was the dog of course always the dog <laughs> um thanks mom <laughs> and Lindsay says mick Lindsay. Um, thanks yeah. Lindsay. thanks for saying yeah, Thanks again, Holler Nation, uh, thank you guys so much for sticking around um, and, and winning that Camo CBD. We're going to do it every single week. Uh, thank you, Gracie. Thank you, Cole in Jacksonville. Thank you, Mickey in L.A. Uh, I'm going to shitstorm the soundboard right now, and then we're going to uh, see you guys later. Look, Candace, I just need you to know I know exactly what you're talking about in your snap to Brian. So, bitch. Great. Bitch. Okay. This is for Rachel, you big fan. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Thank <laughs> you.
Hey baby, I hear the blues are calling Toss salads and scrambled eggs Oh my Sega! Guys, thank you so much again. Mickey, we'll yell at you later. Holler Nation, we'll see you next week.